Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be talking about intermediate modeling and steady state statistical analysis in ARENA simulation software. So today we'll be building a model first for a manufacturing system where entities or parts move around the system based on their own sequences. So far what we have seen that all the entities follows uh, the same path. Uh, in whatever system we were considering. But now we'll see that different entities will follow different sequences while getting processed throughout the system. So let's go ahead and start today's video. So here we'll be modeling a small manufacturing system where entity dependent sequence will be declared. And we will also work on data requirements and availability, how we can define sequence, how we can use expression, variables and attributes when necessary. And we'll be also doing verification of the system. So after building our model, we're gonna like send a verifying entity throughout the system to just to make sure that the system is working as far as we wanted it to work. And after that, we are gonna work on statistical analysis of steady state simulation and how we can define the warm up period and run length, as well as we'll be also doing a batch run for a steady state model. So let's go ahead and start to this first portion of the video. So over here, we have a small manufacturing plant. So which consists of four cells, cell one, cell two, cell three, and cell four. So part arrives and then we have four cells where they move around. So part is arriving from this end, from this left side, and then it's going on in a clockwise motion from in between cells. And then after getting processed, it's going out from this side. So it's a circular layout of cells. So part enters from left, exit at right, and traveling time, travel only clockwise direction. So let's say, a part is in cell one, it will go to cell two, and then cell three and cell four. However, it won't move in this direction. Let's say it's coming from cell two, it will come back to cell one. No anti-clockwise motion, so it will only flow in the clockwise direction. This is an educational model that we are building here. So maybe in real life facility, it's not the case, but just to demonstrate the sequence dependent movement, we are showing this video. All right, and the travel time between all these cells is two minutes. Is it logical? Because we can see like they're apart from each other and maybe travel time between these cells, between this, uh, among these cells are not equal, but for the simple modeling purpose, we are assuming that the travel time between each of the cell is two minutes. There are three separate parts and the inter-arrival time is all merged. So we'll have just one create module. When we'll be starting our model in Arena, we'll just have one create module and the time between arrival is exponentially distributed with a mean of 30 minutes. So there is a probability of 26% that the incoming part will be of type one, 48% type two, and rest 26% is type three. The so different part types follows different route that I mentioned. So over here, as we can see, part A will go, will get, will enter the system, go to cell one, then to cell two, and then to cell three and four. So it's like one, two, three, four. It's in sequence. For part two, it's not the case. Part two will arrive, and then we'll get processed in cell one. Then it will go to cell two and then four, and then two back again, and then three. So you, you might get a little confused that I mentioned that part will only flow in a clockwise direction through the facility. But, so over here, uh, as we can see that what I mentioned that part will move through in the clockwise direction. However, it does, what it means is that, part cannot move from cell A 
to cell four directly. It has to go from cell one to cell two, three, and then come back to four. It can't move in this direction or from this direction to this direction. That movement is restricted. All right. Then we have part three. So it will enter the system, get processed in cell two, come back to cell one, and then get processed in cell three, and then it will leave the system. At the end, we are going to observe the utilization, the time and number in the queue, cycle time for each part type, and we are going to run the model for 32 hours. So, what, what we like, we're going to use basic process panel as well as we're going to use basic advanced process and advanced transfer. However, there are some new concepts that will be introduced through this model non identical machine at cell 3 so if we go back to the picture we can see that cell 3 has two machine let's say this one is new and this one is old so we have two kinds of machine the same machine maybe they have bought one recently and the other one was there for a long time so what it will do is that the processing time will vary the newer one will work faster in compared to the older one so that is a new concept. And then we'll, we, as I introduced already, that we're gonna have entity movement depending on sequence of their own. And then next, so there, are, so one more thing, when I'm gonna build a model, this one or any other model that I have demonstrated in my videos, there might be more than one way to build that model correctly. However, the main thing to keep in mind is that whatever logic or however, what kind of, uh, maybe you have, you are using a different logic to represent the system, do it correctly. So there is no right and wrong while you are building your logic, but you have to represent the system correctly. Like whatever um, modules you use, doesn't matter as long as it represents the true logic, true system, fine. That's fine. So important to think about data structure. We're going to see that next and with how we can use expression. One more small tips here. What is the difference between a variable and an expression? Expression is a data structure in ARENA that we can use to define formulas or even numbers. But, and variable, okay, let's talk about variable first. And variable is something which an entity can change. It represents a system statistics. So, ex so if we define an expression, an entity cannot change that expression. Maybe an expression is used to represent the probability distribution for um, inter-arrival time for an entity. So a random variable will be generated from that expression. However, an entity cannot change that expression or anything about that formula. However, for variables, it can get changed depending on the system stat. So that is one difference between these two. And I have already talked about how variable and attribute differs from each other. So attribute is used to define, attribute is also one kind of variable, but it is entity specific variable, which, which, is, which are basically used to define entity features such as due dates, part type, um, system time and so on, um, service time and so on. But variable is something that represents the system as a whole. Okay, and we'll be using advanced transfer panel. So let's go ahead and start the model in ARENA. I'll go, I'll come back and forth between this PowerPoint slide and the ARENA DOE file when we need. So I'll go to my search bar, I'll type in arena, double click. First of all, I'll go to file, I'll hit save as, and then I'm gonna save my file inside online video, videos. I'm gonna basically save it here. I'll name it model 7.1. Next, I'll go to view, I'll get my grids on. Okay, so 
let's go ahead and declare some attribute variable and expression first before we start building our logic so i'll go to basic process panel and then i'll go to attribute the first attribute i'm going to create is part type this is a variable or this is an attribute not variable let's say attribute okay this is an attribute which will give the value for each incoming part to be of a particular type we're gonna generate like that probability using discrete probability distribution using an assigned module later on so for initialization we are not initializing it to any value so just type in a name for this attribute next one cell 3 machine index in cell three, we have two machines, new one and old one. So this is an attribute which is gonna keep a track which entity is using which machine in cell three because processing time will be generated based on that for each entity. And then we'll have another attribute called process time. Okay, so we are done. So we have our three attributes here. First one is defining part type. Second one is uh, defining um, basically used to keep track of machine index in cell three. And then the last one is processing time. We'll see how we're gonna use it in the logical model, the logic portion of the modeling. Next, we'll go to variable and we're gonna create our first variable called cell three process time factor. And it will have two rows because there is two machine and then we'll initialize the value to 0.8 and then the second row to one so the first machine will be the newer machine and the second machine on you know, the picture that we saw will be the older one so the processing time for the newer machine is a little faster we could have done it in another way we could have given a factor of one processing factor of one for the new machine and processing factor of 1.2 for the old machine. That's the same thing. But instead of that, we have just used like 0.8 and one. Same thing. Make sure you just have the values defined appropriately. And then we'll create a variable called transfer time because the transfer time between all the station or all the cells is two minutes. So instead of like typing it again and again, we're just gonna use this variable called transfer time. And later on, if we need to change it, we can just come here and um, change the initialization value to something else if the transfer time is constant between all the cells. So that's like saving your time. Initialize to value of two. All right, I'll go ahead and hit save before doing something else. Next, I'm gonna go to entity data module. So we'll have the first entities as parts, parts will get in as parts, and then they will be divided or classified between into three parts. So we'll name the first classification as part one, the second one as part two, third one as part three. Okay, and for simple parts, like the arriving parts, let's say we will just use picture of a ball. And then for part one, let's go ahead and initialize the picture to yellow balls. It's not a page, yellow ball. Okay, I should select this one. For part two, let's go ahead and select red ball. And for part three, let's go ahead and select um, green ball. So yellow, red, green. So it will help us to visualize how parts are moving around during verification process. Okay, so we have created our entities. Next, we'll create our resource resources. So the first resource we have is cell one machine. Cell one machine. It's of fixed capacity. Then we'll have cell two machine. 
and then we will have cell three machine but old and new right so the first let's say the first one is old and then the next one is cell three machine new okay and then we'll have cell four machine okay next let's go ahead and create sets so i'll go to set data module the first set will be for cell three machine okay so type the resource because we are grouping here two resources so the first member would be cell three machine new and then the second member will be old why i did it in this way because let me go back to the variable. So for cell three process time factor, the initial value for the processing time, the factor is 0.8 for the first row. That means if we are giving index to our machine in cell three, index one represents the new machine and index two represents the old machine. That's why we are keeping that sequence while we declared variable, while we, de while we are declaring our um, machine sets. Okay, next, we are gonna create one more set here. We'll name it entity type. Okay, and what we are grouping here, entity type. And then we'll double click. We'll go ahead and enter part one, part two, and then part three. So, with this tutorial, you might have a little bit clear idea how to use set. So if we click here, when you are grouping resources, just use a resource. When you are grouping counter through your record module, you can, you, you can make a set of counter, or you can make a set of tally, or you can make a set of entity type or entity pictures and so on. But if you need to group your queues, sequence, or any other process or whatever you want to do, then we have to go to advanced process panel and then use advanced set. In advanced set, we'll see that set type could be queues, could be storage, or could be others. So inside others, you can group anything you want to group together in, for your model. So we are gonna use it for uh, grouping our sequence later on, but for now, I'll just take this off and I'll go back to basic process. So I have grouped together cell three machine. I have grouped together entity types. All right, so we are almost done with declaring our datas. However, we haven't declared the sequence because I'm gonna build the logical model first and then it'll come back and create the sequence. Because if I don't do that, I have to arbitrarily name my stations and routes, uh, not routes, basically stations, which is a little difficult to remember. So if you have them physically in your uh, workspace, it will be easier when you are creating your sequence. So that, that's the way I do my model. Maybe you can do it in the other way, it depends. So I'll go ahead and hit save, and then I'll go back and start my model. First thing first, I'll get a create module. Double click on the create module, we'll name it create, Part arrival. Entity type at this moment during creation will be parts because our inter arrival time for all the parts is grouped together. If it was separated, then we could have maybe got three different create modules if the data was collected differently, but they're grouped together while data, collect, data collection. That's why we are just using parts as the creation entity here. Time between arrival is 13 minutes. Unit will be in minutes. Entities per arrival is one. There is no batch arrival. Maximum arrival is infinite and the first creation is done during zero minutes. And we don't have a box to define the first creation unit. Uh, however, it uses the unit that we define for our time between arrival. So it, the same unit is used for value over here and first creation blank. Let's go ahead and click OK. Next, we are gonna get an assign module from basic process panel. Double click on the assign. We'll name this assign as assign part features. The first assignment would be 
for part type. So we'll select attribute and the name of the attribute is part type. And here we are gonna go to build expression and then we will browse uh, random distribution. We will select discrete probability. So this is a cumulative probability function. So we know that 26% of the arriving parts will be part type one. And then 48% would be part type two. So if we add 26 plus 48, it adds up to 74. So here the probability would be 0 0.74. And next, the last is always easy to define. So all the probabilities will add up to one. So the cumulative probability for part three is one and value would be three. So instead of declaring it as part one, part two, part three, we have used the value of one for defining part type one, value of two for defining part type two, and value of three for defining part type three. All right, I'll go ahead and click OK. So after an entity is created, when it will enter this assign module, the first assignment it will get would be whether it's a part A, part A one, part two, or part three depending on the uh, random probability distribution, a discrete random probability distribution. All right, next one, we'll go ahead and click add, and then we'll select attribute, and here attribute name as entity.type, and then we'll go to build expression, and then we'll select set, and then we have created a set called entity type. So I just want the name of that set. So entity type bracket part type. So entity type is a set. It has three rows in it. The first row represents part type one, second row part type two, third row part type three. Now you might have a question that why I have like this, two things are almost similar. When an entity will get in, it will know its part type based on the first attribute assignment. Then why I'm doing another assignment for entity.type? Because if I declare it like this in here using entity.type, which is an inbuilt attribute in Arena, then inside the category overview report, I'll have the um, number of entities of type A that arrive to the system, number of entities of type B that arrive to the system separately. So I could have done this in a similar way. Maybe if I wanted to know the system time individually for each of these part types, I could have used my arrival time in the beginning to get the entity arrival time. And then I could have got a record module at the end before dispose to record their departure time. And that's how I could have got their system time separately based on part type or even their counts, like how many part type entered the system or not. However, instead of doing that, we can also define it here using entity.type. So if I define it in the beginning, I don't need to include that logic here. But if you want, it's up to you, it's totally fine. All right, next we'll click OK for now. However, we'll come back and we'll add the sequence through this assign module later on. So I'll click OK. Next, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to advanced transfer, sorry, transfer panel, and I'll get station, one station here. I'll, I'll connect the assign with the input of the station. So we'll name this station as order arrival station. And then that's the name of the module. So the station name would be order arrival. So station module name is order arrival station. Station name is order arrival. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. All right. Next, I should have got my route. But instead of that, I'm going to build all my station first and my processes first. And then I'll come back and um, get my routes. So I'll get one more station and I'll paste it here. I'll name this station as cell one station. 
and then station name is cell one. And then I'll go to basic process. I'll get a process module. So after arriving to station one, it's getting processed inside cell one, not station one, cell one station. Okay, we'll name this as cell one process. Action would be cease, delay, and release. We'll go ahead and click add. And then in resource name, we're going to select cell one machine. I'll click OK. And then let's say we will use expression to define the cell one processing time. Unit will be in minutes. I'll click OK. And then let's go back to the PowerPoint. If we go back to the design, we can see, sorry, let's go back to the um, table. We can see that for each of this part, what's happening is that part one is coming in, going to cell one. Part two is coming in, going to cell one. But part three is coming in, going to cell one. But they're entering cell one only once. So we can see one, two, three, four for part one. Like it's not coming again to cell one. For second one, no, it's not coming back. For third one, no, it's not coming back. So we could have also used processing time for defining the processing time in cell one for each part. However, we can also use expression to define the processing time for each part in cell one. But for other cells, we are gonna use sequence data module to define the attribute called process time. But for cell one, we're gonna use expression to define it. Just to demonstrate how you can use expression to define processing time, that's it. Okay, so I'll go to advanced process. I'll go to expression, double click here, and then I'll create an expression called cell one process time. And then there'll be three rows because there are three parts and then their um, distribution is as follows. Triangular and then uh, six, eight, and 10. This is exactly whatever is written in the simulation with arena textbook model 7.1. From there, I'm referencing all this input data and the module um, scenario. Triangular, and then minimum is 11, maximum uh, most likely is 13, and max is 15. So you can see the processing time for part two is more than processing time of part one in cell one, because they're different parts. And then for part three, it's seven, 10, and 13. Okay, let's go ahead and click OK. Then we'll come back to the process module and over here, let's go to build expression. In build expression, so we'll go to inside, we'll browse advanced process variable. We have created a expression now, cell one process time. However, it's a three by one matrix. So we have to tell Arena which row to access. Which row to access depends on what? Depends on part type. So we'll go to attribute and then we'll get part type from here and then, okay. So if it's part one, then type one, pro cell one process time array, row, the first row of cell one process time array will be accessed by ARENA. If it's a part type two, then the second row and following if it's three, we'll go, ARENA will browse the third row of this matrix. And then I'll click OK. And that's what we have to declare here. Next, we'll go back to advanced transfer and then we'll get one more station, our next station. And double click on it. The name of this module will be cell two station. And we'll name the station as cell two. And then we'll go back to basic process and then get a process module. I always like my module to be aligned <laughs> for some reason, but it's not always possible. All right, let's go ahead and edit the process module. 
we'll name this cell to process. Action delay would be cease delay release and the resource name would be cell to machine. Okay, and then in expression, We'll select expression, delay type will be expression, units will be in minutes, and in expression, we are gonna type in process time. So that's an attribute that we have initialized, but we haven't assigned any value to it. So when we will create sequence, we are gonna assign the process, process time for a part in a particular cell, depending on the sequence. Okay, we are gonna create, click okay. Next, we are gonna do the same thing for cell three and cell four. So we'll get a station first. Go ahead and edit the station name and module. So cell three station and the station name is cell three. And then let's get the other two station. So there'll be no connection between it so that we don't need to come to this panel one more time. Okay, and then we'll go to basic process. Let's get one process for uh, cell three. And then we'll get one more process for cell four. Okay, I'll get the connect route here. Double click here. Name would be cell three process. Action would be cease delay release. And then we are in resource type, we're gonna select a set. set name is cell three machine because we have two machines here. Selection rule, let's just select cyclic for now. However, for at attribute, we want to know which machine has been used because depending on which machine an entity has seized, either the old one or new one, the processing time will vary. So we are gonna get that attribute. And if how the entity is gonna select or the operator, whoever is operating, depending, the selection rule is cyclic. However, it could be random, it could be preferred order, it could be like, yeah, this part should go to the new one, this part should go to the old one and so on, or largest remaining capacity or smallest busy number, anything. But for this one, we are just selecting cyclic. We'll click okay. And then in delay type, we'll come by and select expression. Units, let's say minutes. And in expression, put a little bit more attention here because we're gonna define it in a little bit different way. So for current expression, we'll get the attribute called process time. Next, we're gonna multiply it with what? Multiply it with the cell process time factor. So we'll come here and then we'll go to set. And then we have created a set call. Sorry, uh, pardon me. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'll just take this off. We have declared the factor as a variable, right? Not as a set. Okay, I'll come back to variable and then I'll select cell three process time factor. And then in bracket, I'll type in I'll type in, sorry, I'll type in an attribute that we have created called cell three machine index. Okay, let me get this one more time. So what's happening over here? So we have process time, right? Process time will be defined later on. And then we have to multiply the process time with what? We have been just given with processing time that a part will spend in cell three. The processing time is not based on whether it's getting processed in new machine or old machine. We are declaring it. So cell three process time factor, if, it's, if the entity is being seized inside new machine, then it will get processed sooner. So let's see if the processing time is two, let's say two, so I'll just type in here. Let's say the processing time is constant too, just an, as an example. And then we multiply it with what? We say that newer machine is more 20% more efficient than the older machine. So it will be multiplied with 0.8. And then it will be 
1.8, I guess. So what happened, what 1.8 or 1.6, let me get the calculator. Um, two times, two times uh, 0.8, sorry, two times 0.8 is 1.6, okay, my bad. So it's 1.6. So we could, what we could have done, we could have told Arena that, okay, if it's new machine, then this is the processing time. If it's old, this is the processing time. But instead of that, we are just using one processing time and then multiplying it with the machine index. If it's new, multiply it with 0.8. If it's old, just keep it as two or whatever is being declared. So that's what we did here. I'll go ahead and delete this part and click OK. And then click OK one more time. Then we will join the next station with the process. Before that, let's go ahead and edit the station. Cell 4 station. So the name of the module will be cell 4 station. Station name will be cell 4. And inside process, we are gonna name this process as cell four um, process. Action would be cease delay release, add, and then the name of the resource will be cell four machine. And delay type will be expression, units will be in minutes. And then here, it's just same as process two. Uh, so we'll name it process time. So, this is the attribute that Arena will access to assign the processing time of a particular part in this cell. We'll go ahead and click OK. The last station is exit system station. So parts will leave system from here. And likewise, we are naming it exit system station. And then we'll get a dispose. Okay. Let's go ahead and name this dispose as part leaves the system. Okay. Next, so we have named all our stations. Next, we are gonna get our routing module. So now if we run our arena model, what will happen? Part will get produced, come to this station and get stagnant over there. It won't, it doesn't know which cell it should go to get processed. So that's why we will need route so that our entity moves or flows through the system. So we'll go to advanced process, and then we'll get route module. How many routes we will have? We'll have five routes. So the first route, we'll name it as route from order arrival station. And routing time is two minutes, right? But we have created a variable, right? For called transfer time, so that we can change it later on transfer time, I'll just type that in. If you don't remember the name, you can go to build expression, go to your variable and then access the variable name from here. Make sure you spell it correctly, or even if you don't spell it correctly, just make sure you are referencing the same name of variables or whatever, uh, let's say expression attributes or anything properly, else Arena will generate error. So it's always safe to use build expression. So you are, just to make sure that you are referencing the right name. Destination type, we have seen that entities usually route from one station to another. And then the arrival station is not directly connected using connect from route module because route module doesn't have a output um, side. So how we do it? We declare the name of the next station over here. But this time, each entity will have a different sequence based on their part type. So destination type will be selected by sequence. So if you, when you select by sequence, it doesn't ask which station it will go next because you have to declare it somewhere else from where Arena will internally go and find out the value from. So I'll go ahead and click OK. I'll get one more route and then I'll connect the output of <clears throat> process with the input of this route. And then we'll name it route <clears throat> from cell one. Route time, transfer 
time and then destination type would be by sequence and make sure the unit is in minutes i'll go back okay unit should be minutes for the first one as well so you can do it you can get new routes and paste it like that or a shortcut would be you can just copy it and paste it and later on go ahead and edit them so the next route is we are routing it from cell to rest remains the same and then we'll get one more route after cell three process and we'll name it route from cell three and then we'll get one more route and name it route from cell four okay that's it we don't need any more route because depending on the sequence entity will go to exit system station the last step in the sequence would be to go to exit station so either using any of this route module depending on their path entity will reach this exit uh, system station so that's it that's so we have the arrival station we have cell one station cell two station cell three and cell four and we have a exit system station let's go ahead and put this logic up here okay let's go ahead and save our file next let's go to advanced transfer so i'm already inside advanced transfer so i'm gonna browse sequence data module from here i'll double click and the first sequence I'm gonna create is for part one. So I'll name it part one sequence. I'll, dub, I'll go here, I'll select this row. Next, I'm gonna specify one by one the sequence and part type one entity will follow. So part, let's go ahead and build it. So from arrival station, part one, Type one will go where? Let's go back to our PowerPoint. So over here we can see that part one will enter cell one after it arrives to the station. So we'll go back here and we will type in the name of the next station it will go, which is cell one. Step name, it's just for our own reference. So we'll name it part one, step one. So part one in step one will go to cell one from order arrival station. Okay. After that, what it will do, it will go to cell two. So we'll name that step as part one, step two. In assignment, we don't need to assign anything to the entity right now because the processing time of, in, of all these entities in cell one is already being declared using an expression. But for other cells, we have to declare the process time here. So I'll go ahead and click OK. So the first step for part one has been created. I'll go ahead and click the next one. So from part, from cell one, it will go to cell two. So station name would be cell two. You can type it in or you can just select it from the drop down menu. Step name, we'll name it part one, step two. This is the name of the current step. And then we, you can just copy it and paste it here for the next one. And then the next step would be part one, step three. Okay. But here we have to make an assignment. So when part entity type one or part one is moving from cell one to cell two, it needs to know the process time that it will require to get processed inside cell two. So we are gonna do a assignment here for an attribute. Which attribute? Process time. And the processing time for part one in cell two is strangularly distributed uh, and it has a value of five, eight, and 10. So we'll type in triangular five, eight, and 10. We are gonna click okay. okay. So now we have the second step for part one. We'll do the same for the next one. So from cell two, where part one will go? Cell three, good. And step name, so the current step is part one, step three. 
and the next step would be part one, step four. And in step four, where it will go? Cell four. Okay. I'll click OK, and then we have to uh, assign the process time that part one is going to spend in cell one. It's triangular distributed with a value of 15, 20, and 25. So over here, I'll type in 15, 20, and 25. Sorry, 25, 15, 20, and 25, right? 15, 20, 25, okay. And then I'll click OK. Okay, okay. Next step, it will go to cell four. And step name would be, the current step name would be part one, step four. But the next step name would be part one, step five. What will happen in step five? It will enter the exit system. But that's that will be done later. Let's just declare this one first. So in part four, uh, in cell four, Part one will need an assignment for the process time, and the time is triangularly distributed with a value of 8, 12, and 16 minutes. So 8, 12, and 16. And I can't declare whether it's in minutes or hours. However, I have already declared the unit of delay inside the process module. So you can use that. So the last but not the least step would be part one will go to exit station and the name of this step would be part one step five there is no assignment because when it's uh, getting out of the exit station it's like going out of her system jurisdiction so we won't do any assignment here so i'll go ahead and click ok so this is just the sequence for part type one we have to do the same thing for part type two so what I would suggest is that uh, you can type, you can uh, consult the book and keep it open while you are modeling this because going back and forth, it's like a little bit time consuming. So you can do that. But for you guys, I'm just like doing it together. Then I'll go back to sequence data module. I'll name this next sequence as part type two sequence. Okay. Double click here and then double click here. Okay. So we can edit it like the one that I showed for part type one, or we can come here and just type in, in, in the same way. So after arriving to the stage, uh, after arriving to this manufacturing plant, part two will go where? Part two will go to cell one. Then cell two, cell four, cell two back again, and then cell three. So let's go ahead and do that. So part two will have one more step, then part one. Why? Because it's going back to cell type two, like it's entering cell type two, off, and then it's going back again to cell type two before going to cell type three. Maybe the processing uh, style or the processing layout is different for this part. Okay. So the first cell will be cell one, and the state name would be, I'll just make this a little wider, and over here, part type two, step one. Okay, and the next one would be, step name would be part type two, step two. Okay, and do I need to do any assignment here? No, do I need to assign processing time here or process time here? No, because we have used expression to define the processing time of all the three parts using expression module. So there is no assignment required for this. And to be honest, it's a little difficult to edit in this window. So we'll go back and try to edit it like this. It's a little easier to see, visualize. Okay, so from cell one, it will go to where? It will go enter cell two, not cell three. And the name of the step would be part two, step two. And from here, it will go back to step, um, cell four. So that step name is part two, step three. We'll make an uh, assignment for the process time. All right. And the process time is triangularly distributed with a value of four, six, and eight. Okay. So triangular four six and eight not nine sorry eight 
I'll click OK. I'll click OK. OK. Next, where it will go? From two, it will go to four. And it, the time is triangularly distributed between 15, 18, and 21 minutes. So the station name will be cell four. Sorry. Cell four. Step name would be part two, step three. The next step would be part two, step four. And the assignment would be for process time. And the process time is triangularly distributed with a value of 15. 18 and 21 minutes. I'll click OK. I'll click OK. And then it will go back to cell 2 one more time. So the station name would be cell 2 and step name would be part 2 step 4 and then the next step name would be part 2 step 5. And here we need to assign the process time, right? Because Though it's going back to cell two one more time, but the processing time when it's re-entering is different from the time that it entered cell two for the first time. So for the second time, process time in cell two for part type two is six, nine, and 12. So in the value we'll write in triangular six, nine, and 12. I'll click okay. And after that, it will enter cell three. So I'll select cell three. Step name, part two, step five. And then the next step would be part two, step six. Okay, I'll click hit okay. And then I have to assign the process time. The process time here is strangularly distributed the among, so the value is 27. 27, sorry, 27, 33, and 39. So triangularly distributed between 27, 33, and 39 minutes. I'll click OK. One more time, OK. And then the last step that it will reach the exit station, exit system station, and the step would be part two, step six, and there is no assignment we are doing. So I'll click OK. So this is, this took quite long in compared to part one. <laughs> okay, so I'll go back to sequence to create the last one. So this would be the sequence for part three type, and then we'll type in sequence. And then one by one, we are gonna add the sequence. So for the first sequence, I'll go to process. So part three is a little different. It's entering cell two first. And the processing time is uh, triangularly distributed with a value of seven, nine, and 11 minutes. Okay. So first station is cell two. First uh, step name is, let's say we'll just select this one and then type it again. Part three, step one. And the next step would be part three, step two. And for the first one, we have to assign the process time. And the process time for this is triangular between seven, nine, and 11 minutes. Seven, nine, and 11 minutes. We'll click OK. After that, it will go back to cell one. Step name is part three, step two. And then the next step is part three, step three. So we don't need to assign process time because it's already being declared using expression. So we'll, we'll not do any assignment here. And then the second last step would be that it will go back to cell three and it has a time distribution of triangular with minimum value of 18 most likely of 23 and max 28 minutes. Okay, so the station name is cell three. Step name is part three, step three. And the next step is part three, step four. And then we'll do assignment for the processing time, process time, and it's triangularly distributed with a value of 18, 23, and 28 minutes. I'll click okay. 
And last, we'll have one more step that it will reach the exit station. And the current name of the step is part three, step four. So for uh, part type three, it is just going to three cells. Part type one went to four cell, part type two went to five cells. Okay. So I'll go ahead and click OK. So we have created all this sequence. Next, what we are going to do is that we are going to create advanced set because we have to assign the sequence to the parts using this assign module. So I'll go to advanced process. I'll go to advanced sets. And over here, I'm going to create a set called part sequence. So this is a set we are creating. And it's a set of sequences. It's not a queue, it's not a storage, so it, it will fall into other category. And then for member name, usually we always get drop downs, right? Okay, this is the name of the member, or this is that. Here we can't have that. So what you have to do, just type in the right name of the sequences here. So I named the first sequence for part type one as part type one sequence. And then I'll just copy it. And then the next one was part type two sequence. Make sure the spaces are correctly done. And the last one is part three sequence. Okay. So we have created a set and it has three members in it for the sequences. So we'll go back to the sign and over here and we'll go to end. And then we'll type, um, attribute we'll select attribute and inside attribute name we will use an inbuilt attribute called entity.sequence that is an inbuilt attribute in arena and then we will specify we'll refer the set and specify that okay if you are part type one this is your sequence if you are part type two this will be your sequence and so on so in new value i'll go to build expression next over here I will go to advanced uh, process variable and then I'll browse advanced set. So I have created an advanced set called part sequence. So I just need the name of this advanced set. So I'll type that, I'll just paste that in here and then I'll type in part type. So part type is divided between three values, one, two, and three. So if it's part type one, sequence one will be browsed. If it's part type two, sequence two will be browsed. Part type three, sequence three will be browsed. So I'll click OK. Next, I'll click OK and go ahead and save my file. OK, and then I'll go to run setup. So over here, we are gonna do one replication for the first time, and then we are gonna run it for 32 hours. Hours per day will be 24. And base time units, let's say minutes. And then we'll go to our project parameter. We'll name this project as small manufacturing, manufacturing plant with entity dependent sequence. And analyst name, arena learners. Okay. And then let's just initialize all these values. I'll click OK, I'll click OK, and then I'll run my model. So I'll hit, uh, I'll go to run, and then run control, let's say batch run. We don't want to see animation for now, and then I'll hit run. Arena has completed the run, I'll click yes, and yes. So in total, 137 entities has left the system. And then let's go ahead and see. For entities, let's browse their time. So see over here, as we have used inbuilt arenas attribute called entity.type and declared it inside the assign module. So though we haven't used the record module, we have got the total time each of these individual parts are spending separately. So you can see over here. All right. So let's go ahead and go to others. And then let's go ahead and check number in. So we can see that 
majority of the part was part two, arriving part was part two because it has a higher probability of 48%. So that's, so in total 143 parts entered the system. Let's go ahead and see the Q status. Number weighting, so in terms of waiting time, we can see that the waiting time for cell one and cell four is highest in compared to cell two and cell three. And then, yeah, number of waiting is more for cell one and cell two, and number of waiting is least for cell three because in cell three, we have two machines. Though one is faster than the other, but it's good. Instantaneous utilization. So over here, though we have created a set, but we can see the utilization for cell three machine, new and old over here, as it is cyclic. So we can see it's almost the same, but it's a little different, right? And then total number cyst is this 142, 100, 202, they are not the same because they all the entities depending on part type had a different route that they were following. All right, so that concludes the first part of our tutorial and then we'll go back to our slide. And then we'll go back to, so for animation, I haven't shown uh, how to build the animation, but you can definitely use uh, simulation with the Rena textbook to develop the animation. So for verifications, so I'll straight away go to verification. So verification is what? There are two very important terms in simulation modeling or any kind of optimization modeling or system modeling. The first one is validation. So when we talk about validation, it means that whether a model that we have built truly represent a system or not. If it doesn't truly represent a system, then we are making a type three error, just like type one and two error, type three error. That means the model is not a true representation of the system. So the statistics that we are gonna get out of it, no matter how accurate data we fit, as the logic is not representing the true system, or maybe the input data is not representing the true system, the output we are getting will not be conclusive. The uh, idea that we can get using the output will not be a true representation of the system. So that's why we have a validity issue. So sometimes for simplification, we try to, uh, reduce the number of steps in a model or try to ignore some of the feature. So that's not a good thing. We are like by oversimplification, we are resulting in validity issue. So you have to keep this in mind. So that's validation. There is no rule of thumb to validate your model. What you can do, you can do the modeling in different steps. So first, you can observe the system. So you can observe the system if it is in real life, if, if it's already an existing system. The next thing you can do is, the next thing you can do is uh, observe the system and then do a preliminary, preliminary, pardon my writing, preliminary model. Build a preliminary model of the system and then go back and collect the data. Okay, collect the data and then update your model one more time. So after updating your model, you can consult someone who knows the system or maybe you might be the one who knows the system. So try to think. So take particular time slots and then think, take historical data and then run your simulation model or any optimization model and see if the output of your model matches the output of the real system from the historical data. If it does, do it a couple of times and then you can get a sample of, let's say you are doing it for 10 times and then you can build a confidence interval and see that around, and then you can conclude that around 95% of the time, maybe uh, one of these, uh, sample 
that your model gave is representing the true system or maybe 100% of time it's representing. So that's how you do validation. For verification, what is verification then? Verification is code. So in verification, what we verify is, is the code that we use to build the model is according to the model that we have thought in our mind should work. So is our model, is our code working or not? So how we can get that? We have to debug our model. The truth is that can probably never completely verify a model because we can just try to verify it, it's working or not. However, if your model size is large, it's difficult to validate or valu validate and even verify your model. So one way of verifying your model is that eliminate the error message. So sometimes after we build a model, arena model, try to run it, we'll find error message. Obviously, if there is a connection error or if you have referenced some attribute uh, incorrectly due to spelling mistake or maybe uh, you haven't initialized the uh, attribute or expression rows or columns correctly, something like that. Or if you have referenced the name of the same process more than once and so on. So you will get definitely error message. So th then you can go back and check your model and verify it. Single entity release, step through the logic. So set maximum arrival to one in create, replace part-time distribution with a constant. So what we have to do here is that, let's go back to Arena. No, I don't want to keep that. I'll go to the same model. I'll stop the run. And then I'll hit, uh, go to file. And then I'll save this as model 7.1 with verification. Okay. Next, I'll come back, go to create part, and then maximum arrival is one. Okay, and then I'll click okay. And then in assign part, I'm gonna take off this distribution. Or I'll just say that, what did they ask here? Replace part type distribution with a constant. So, Part type is one. Let's say all the parts will have type one, will be type one and then save. And then we can slow down our model. Hit save one more time. And then we can use step to run our model. So first model is initialized over here. Okay, next. Okay, let me just zoom out a little bit. And then here I'll click step one more time. Part is created. At two minutes, the first part is created. Just a minute, I'll hit stop. And then I'll do it step by step one more time. Initialization. And then did part one got created? It's showing that, but why well, it's not up here. 13 minutes maximum arrival is one. So I'll go ahead and hit run and see. Okay, so I think I have my batch run on. So I'll go to run, I'll stop batch run. That's why there is no animation going on. So these numbers over here create part arrival number out. So these boxes are animating variables. So if I have batch run, nothing will work. Sorry about that. So I'll hit step one more time. And then the first part got created. And then it was a red ball that arrived. And then it's going to order station. And then let's, I'll just wait a little bit. I'll hit step and then it's routing to where? It's routing to cell one because we say it, okay, create one part and that one part will be of type one. And then it's going to go to cell two. So we can see it came to cell two and then it came to cell three and then it's routing to cell four and then it will go to exit station. 
so it exited. So same thing you can do for, you can come back to this assign module, go to your part type one and type a value of two. So the incoming entity will be of part type two and see if it follows the order. I'll go ahead and click okay. So for part type two, uh, let's go to the sequence module. Over here, so it will come to cell one, go to cell two, go to cell four, come back to cell two, and then go to cell three. So let's go ahead and check whether it follows that or not. So I'll click step, first part got created, and now it's a blue part. And then it's going to cell one. So it comes to cell one, then it's going to cell two. It went to cell two, and then it's going to cell four, and then it will go back to cell two, sorry. It will go back to cell two, and so on. So that's how you can verify your model. Okay, I have defined my sequences, and the parts are following that sequence or not. So that's one way of ver verifying your model. So I'll go back to my slide, and then let's see what they have discussed further. <laughs> So we can eliminate error message. We have seen how we can use single entity and check the model. Stress model under extreme condition. So then we can long run our model and say if the arrival time is, um, let's say now it's 30 minutes, what if it's one minute per arrival? Is my model gonna, um, it, my model should be able to take care of that in real life. Can it do it by itself as a model? You can do that. Or performance estimation like slide rule, decimal placement, and so on. So basically, I'll talk about this too. I'm not too much familiar with these other methodologies, but this too is quite simple to do. So just keep in mind that validation is validating your model that it represents a true system. If it's not, then the output you are getting from this model will not be effective for evaluating your system. If it exists or if it's not, if it's not exist non-existence, even you'll get a wrong perception. You might get wrong perception of the system. And verification is, okay, I know my system, that's my model. Is my model, is my code working properly or not? I have written my code. Is it following the right loop or not? And so on. So that's verification. All right. So that concludes my first video for this chapter. I'll try to make another video where I'll be using the same model and talk about output statistical analysis for uh, steady state condition. Thank you all for watching the video.